Now that we've looked at the properties of this single request within our web test, let's look at some of the options we have on the web test itself. Before we do that, we're going to go ahead and record a more complicated web test that includes more requests in order to take advantage of some of these different options. So first, let's rename our existing test. It's a good habit to get into to name your tests something that is easily uh, associated with what they do. I'm going to call this one home page only. And then we will record a new test. So we'll add a new web performance test. And once again, we'll provide the URL for our site. And this time I'm actually going to click through a few categories before finally clicking on a song or album and adding it to my cart. And then we'll say that at that point I'm just going to stop and abandon shopping. So we'll stop the recording. Again, it's going to do the dynamic parameter detection, and then it's going to run the test, and it's going to fail again because of that missing favicon file. I'm going to go ahead and delete that favicon request, and then verify that I can run this test successfully. And you see it succeeds. Now let's look at the options for our test. Starting with the left, we can see we have run test. If we look at the dropdown for this, we have four different options. We can run, we can debug, or we can do either of those pausing before starting. We've already seen what run test does. Let's have a look at debug test. We'll click this to start debugging. And notice down here in the bottom that we have our locals, watch, call stack, and immediate windows available to us. We could add breakpoints that would allow us to inspect these various windows. Since I don't have any, the test proceeds pretty much as if I had simply run it. Another option is to pause before starting. If we do this, it'll allow us to step through the requests. A new menu option appears, which is the step menu option. And with this, we can click Step and step through each request individually. After each one succeeds, you can step again and continue stepping until your test is complete. The next menu option is something that allows you to add a data source. You can use a data source to bind a set of parameters to your test such as various search terms or user IDs that someone should log in as. We'll look at how to do that in a later module. You can also specify the credentials to be used when running the test. And you can add additional recordings to a test once you've already recorded it by clicking the Add Recording button. Let's look at how that works now. Once we click Add Recording, it'll launch the recorder once more. And Let's say that we simply wanted the user to view the home page one last time. So we'll bring back up our home page and simply stop the recording at that point. Now you'll see that we've added that request to the end of the request that we already had. But from there you can reorder it, placing it anywhere in the queue that you like. We'll leave it at its location at the end. You can add a web test plugin. You can also add a request plugin. These are both advanced topics that will be covered in a later module. You can generate code, and we'll see how that works in a moment. You can parameterize your web servers. This is a useful tool that allows you to specify what the web server uh, URL and port should be, which makes it very easy for you to change a web test without having to go through and modify the URL of each individual request. If we click on this, we can simply say that the web server uh, parameter name should equal whatever this is here. So we'll say this is fine. We'll say OK. And now you can see that we have a parameter specified for our web server. If you were to change which port you are running this on, you could then just go in here and change the port in one location 
and not have to change it for every single request. Trust me, it can get very tedious trying to change those on each individual request. So parameterizing the web server is something that you'll do fairly frequently. Another thing this allows you to do is run these performance tests against a URL that perhaps is on a stage server or a test environment after you've uh, verified that it works successfully on your local machine. Next, you can promote dynamic parameters to web test parameters. In this case, we don't have any dynamic parameters, so we cannot actually perform this operation. We'll see an example shortly that shows how you can take a dynamic parameter and then promote it to a web test parameter. Next, you can set request details. This is a handy way to specify the reporting name and think time as well as response time goals for all of the requests in one simple table. For instance, if we wanted to set the home name or the reporting name here to home page and then specify the next one as category one, category two, etc. Also, if I wanted to say that my think time when I recorded it wasn't really indicative of true time that a person might spend when they're looking at this, I can go through and I can edit my think times very quickly and say, okay, I think they'll spend about five seconds or so on each of these. And now I can do this all in one location without having to do it from each individual page through its property grid. Likewise, we can set the response time goal. I'm gonna say that each one of these should take no more than a second to render. And we'll say this is home page revisited. Say okay. And once we've set all of those, we can save our changes. And the next time we run our test, we'll see in the results that we've got the home page, the categories, home page revisited, etc. We can also look at our validation rules now and see that our response time goal was met. And also over here in our property grid, we can see that the response time goal is in fact one second as expected. Looking at the very last thing, we can create a performance session for this test. This is something that will let you add a profiler and adding profiling to the application is a, an advanced topic that will be covered in a separate module, but it lets you use Visual Studio's profiling tools to run through the test, and then it will show you the results based on the choice of profiling method that you use. For instance, if you look at CPU sampling, it will show you a breakdown of where the methods in your source code of your test were spending the most amount of time in terms of CPU cycles. Alternately, you can use instrumentation, which will measure function call counts and show you how many times each function was called and how long each, func each function took to perform. You can do memory allocation and concurrency as well. Now let's look at what would happen if our page did not come back in the response time goal that was specified. For the home page, we've said that the response time goal is one second. In this case, our home page is being rendered by a home controller. And we can go into our home controller and say that it's going to sleep for a little more than a second. So we'll say system.threading thread sleep 1100 milliseconds. And once we've built our application, we can come back in and we can run our test. And we'll see that the results now will not all be green because of the response time goal not being met. In this case, you can see that our request took, in this case, 3.6 seconds because it was actually having to rebuild the application on first load. The second time we visited the home page, it took a little bit over 1.1 seconds, as we would expect. And in either case, these two requests failed. And the reason is, if we view under details, that our response time goal was not met. Likewise, if we had set a response URL and that response URL was not the one we expected, this validation would fail as well. You can add additional validation rules to these URLs. For instance, you can look for a particular string. If we come in here to this request and we say we want to add 
a validation rule, there are a number of different options that you have for validation rules, and these will be covered as well in later modules. The simplest one is simply to find some text. And if we consider what was on our initial page, if we say that we want to look for some text that says music store, for instance, we could simply type in music store here, tell it go ahead and ignore case. You can use a regular expression if you want, since there may be some variation in the actual text that you get back. And then you can specify whether you want this page to fail when that text is found or to succeed when it's found, which is the default. We want this test to succeed whenever it finds that text, so we'll say OK. Now that's added a validation rule. Let's go ahead and remove our thread sleep so our pages will run quickly again. And then run our test one more time. You can see the response time goal still failed. This was because the page had to be rebuilt for the first time uh, as part of ASP.NET's just-in-time compilation. However, we can see that our find text rule did in fact pass, and it found our music store text.